session, I'm going to show you the, the relationship between the access policy and the client forwarding policy, uh, considerations you need to think about when you've got wildcard discovery and, and how that affects your client forwarding policy. So here I've got a very uh, simple access policy. Um, what this says is my application LDAP uh, and CentOS are denied for the user uh, mryan at welshgeek.net. Uh, LDAP is specifically a, a DNS SRV record. Um, which I want to I want to block, um, and uh, CentOS um, is a specific um, server that's only available on port twenty two for SSH, um, and uh, everybody else sh and every everybody then gets access to every other application, and every other application also includes the wildcard discovery application. And I'll show you that in a second. So, in my client forwarding policy. What this says is the user, uh, any user that's got LDAP or CentOS application segments should only get those application segments if they're allowed by policy. Um, and then everything else uh, hits the, the default rule, uh, my auto discover rule, which includes my wildcard dis discoveries. Um, I, everybody's going to get those. Um, so let's take a look at the effect of that policy. So let's um, launch the Zscaler app. And you can see the log files being created. I'm going to take a look at those log files in a second. Let's give it a second to start the services. Let's open up the app. Uh, there you go. We're connected. Internet security and private access. So we got all those applications. So let's take a, a look. Let's see if we can ping. Um, CentOS. Obviously, ping doesn't work through ZPA, but it's going to sh show the DNS resolution. Uh, CentOS.welshgeek.net. Um, I got a 164 address back. Let's um, SSH to CentOS.welshgeek.net, and it got blocked, and we get the warning. Well, that's that's good. We got blocked, but that's not what we expected to happen. We didn't expect the user to get the definition for centos.welshgeek.net. They shouldn't have even been able to, to do the DNS resolution. Um, let's do something different. Let's do the NS lookup. Um, and we do set type equals SRV, L underscore LDAP, uh, underscore tcp.welshgeek.net. And I actually get an answer back and, and it returns DC2, um, which which would then enable us to go and get the, the SLV, uh, in this case, the, the LDAP connection. Um, so, so that's interesting. So let's um, understand a little bit about what, um, what happened. I'm just going to scroll up through my logs here. Um, uh, so this this is this is the definition for the um, for the application segment. So we can see that uh, let's just maximize this up. You don't need to read through all of this, but I've got all my definitions. Or these are these these are the wildcards. Dot .welshgeek.co.uk, dot .compute dot .internal. Um, yeah, uh, and if we if we just run a, a quick um, search through that, I find str dot .welshgeek .net. Um, uh, there's the there's the welshgeek.net definition. You see, um, so that's that's why the the, uh, the the discovery worked and CentOS triggered against that because if I search for the actual application CentOS, it doesn't exist there, nor does nor does LDAP. And so what has actually happened here in terms of the policy? The user didn't get the policy definitions. They didn't get the application segment for LDAP or CentOS. What they did get was the auto discover. And so the auto discover triggered, allowed the, the lookup to occur. Um, and and therefore, um, that's when the user did the DNS lookup. It hit, it hit the auto discover. And we can see this in the diagnostics. Um, here it was my connection to the CentOS application. We hit the the access policy LDAP that did that did the block, but it did the block on the access policy even though the application didn't match against the definition for CentOS. Uh, the client side it actually matched the the auto discover. So we still had to get the policy without the user getting the application segment, but it's not necessarily the desired behavior. 
Um, so let's um, let's think about this slightly differently. Um, if we go to the access policy um, and let's change um, the client forwarding policy here um, and let's remove CentOS and click save. Okay, so what this is now going to say is the user, you know, the, the application LDAP, the user will only get it if they've got the defined application, if they're, they're permitted, anything else will fall through to these two. The access policy still denies access um, to CentOS. So at this point, if I run that search again, you know, I can see that my client's been updated. I've now got the definition for CentOS specifically. Um, if I try and do that um, SSH now, I still get denied, I'll get blocked, and I'll get blocked at the client side um, not not in the cloud because the application definition isn't there. And if I was to try and do a curl to it, uh, HTTP centos.welski.net, it'll 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 fail because only port twenty two was ever actually defined as the application segment. Um, and I can go one further here, and I can edit this, um, and I can take that out of that rule. Click save. Um, and at this point, um, my SSH will succeed because my policy is no longer blocking it. So you can see the, the, the relationship between the client forwarding policy, the definitions that get downloaded to the client, and we want to be as efficient as possible. We don't want to send hundreds of policies down to the user if they're only going to be denied, only send the user the allowed ones. Um, but we do need to be um, cautious about the auto discovery. So, because we, we don't want the user in this case to get the LDAP lookup. If we go back to that NS lookup, uh, we do um, set type SRV underscore LDAP underscore TCP net, and the user is getting that answer. And, and, and potentially I don't want that to happen. So how do we do that? And that comes along with segmentation. So for the purpose of this test, I'm actually gonna turn around and say, actually, I want to bypass EPA for the auto discovery. So we click save on that. So nobody gets the auto discovery, uh, but everybody else gets access to everything else. So, so now um, if I go back through here, I, I know that the user isn't getting the definition for LDAP, but they are getting the definition for CentOS. Um, so now let's do the uh, NS lookup under uh, set type equals, equals SRV underscore LDAP, underscore TCP, WelshGeek.net. And now it'll actually fail because it's no longer hitting that, that wild card. Um, obviously, you know, um, there might be cases where I still want wild card kind of function, but if I want to specifically block a, a DNS SRV record, I either need to say um, deny access uh, but but remember, DNS is, is, is quite a fundamental thing that needs to happen. So actually, what I want to do is block that wildcard discovery from, from happening whatsoever. Um, that prevents the user getting that SLV lookup. Uh, everything else passes through. Um, and my access policy here um, actually doesn't really make much sense to buy put, to do a block on this SLV record because SLV by its very nature is a DNS lookup. Nobody ever actually connects to an application segment. This is why it's defined as, as port one. You know, we just want to enable the DNS to, to function. Um, you don't actually connect to that host, you connect to the host that's that's responded, uh, that's in the, the DNS SLV record response. So in, in summary, if you want to do, uh, if you want to block SLV records, you need to make sure you block the auto discover. Uh, that's, that's, that's fundamental in terms of the DNS. Um, if you decide you want to use client forwarding policy to reduce the, the, the list of applications that the user's machine gets, um, you, know, you use this functionality, be aware that they will still trigger potentially on the auto discover. Um, they will still get blocked when they come by the access policy. Um, so, so you're reducing what's getting downloaded to the client. That means the processing is more efficient. Um, 
both in terms of um, what the Zscaler app needs to do to define those application segments and potentially things like lightweight filters or whatever are on, uh, on, on Windows platforms. Um, so it's more efficient, um, but be aware that um, sometimes what you think is gonna happen, um, you'd expect this to actually get blocked at the definition, means that it does actually fall through um, to that auto discovery. Hope that helps, hope it makes it clear. Any questions, email me, mark at zscaler.com. Thank you.